In today's video, I will explain filters, sorting, and groups in Notion databases in under 10 minutes. If you wanna learn about Notion, subscribe, let's get into it. So the first thing we are going to do here is do forward slash database. So we are going to click here on table view. And then here we are going to now create a new database. Obviously, if you have a database, you can just use that. So the first thing we have here is filters. Now with filters, you can create simple filters or you can create advanced filters. And what I'm going to be doing is working with advanced filters as that allows me to have multiple different filters working at once. So first I'm just going to write some random stuff here, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And then here we can add some tags. So I'm going to say one, and let's do this one as one, and this one as two. Now with filters, what we're basically doing is saying, hey, I only wanna see some stuff. So if I click on filter, and click on add advanced filter. What I can do here is say where the name, for example, contains blah. Now, because all of these contain the word blah, they're all going to show up. But if I say blah, blah, you can see the singular blah got removed because I'm only seeing stuff that has blah, blah in it. That was a weird example. Or we can click on the name here and say, actually, let's filter this by tags. So this is the tags here. And what we can do is say, I only want to see tags that contain option one or two. And then it's going to remove the ones that aren't relevant. Now it's not removing it from the database, it's just hiding it from this view. So what I'm going to do is rename this to everything. And then I'm going to duplicate this and say filters. Just so we can see, okay, these are the ones that have filters on it. And if we click here on filter, we can change here where tag contains one. Now you can see the two got removed. Again, it hasn't been removed from the database, it's just been removed from this view. And a view is the same thing as a tab. So under this filters tab, maybe I won't call it filters, uh, test. So under this test tab, we are not seeing two. It has not been deleted from the database. It is still here under everything as you can see. It is just changing on here. So filters, sorting, and groups all are working in tabs. They are not deleting anything, so they are just changing what we are seeing on this tab. So let's duplicate the everything again and just call this uh, giraffe, spell wrong. And let's add another property here. Let's say a date property. So I'm just going to add today's date, I'm going to add tomorrow's date, and I'm going to add the day after that. Now, as you can see, this filter here is showing up in blue and not in gray. That is because it is active. So I have started creating something. Now, I never finished it, so there isn't actually anything going on here. But as you can see on this one, again, it is blue and this rule has actually been finished. We're only seeing tags that contain one. We can click on this contains and change it to does not contain, is empty, is not empty. So if I say is empty, we are only seeing stuff where the tags has not been tagged anything. Now, as you can see, all of these have been tagged something. So if I were to remove this tag from blah, blah, you can see now under test, blah, blah is showing up. But if I were to add something to it, it gets removed from here. The most important thing to remember with filters, sorts, and groups is that we are just changing the actual tab. We are not changing the whole database and changing everything completely. We are just changing that tabs view. Now under this giraffe tab, let's change this rule here. So we currently have one rule, which we never finished where tags contains and then we never changed it. So I'll delete this rule and let's add a filter rule. So right now the start date is relative to today showing this week. So as you can see, we are seeing this week, meaning we are not seeing the other items show up here as they were tagged for the 22nd and the 21st. So if I change it to this month, for example, now you can see that they are showing up or I could change it to this day and then I'm only seeing stuff that is relevant to today. Again, this is working with filters. You can do some absolutely incredible things with filters. If you wanna see what I built with this, check out headquarters, my premium template. Now let's have a look at sorting. So I'm just going to duplicate everything again and just call it everything too. And now let's play with the sorting. So the filter here doesn't actually have anything in it. I'll just remove that. So what sorting does is change the order in what you're seeing stuff. So let's say we work with dates here. I'm just going to add some other stuff. 
15th, there we go, just added some random stuff. So now if I click on the sort here, and let's say let's sort by date. What I can say here is sort by ascending or sort by descending. And as you can see, it actually changes the order. This is really, really useful to work with. Another thing you can do is sort by tags. So let's just add some examples here, priority and low priority. All right, I've added some random priorities and low priorities to this. What we can do is sort by not only the date, but also add another sorting of priority. So if I click on add sort, we can select the tags here and say that I want to see this by ascending or descending. Now the problem is it is prioritizing first the date because it comes up first. So if I drag this here, you can see it's going to now change the order. Whatever is highest up in this list of sorting will be the priority sorting. So here we have tags as the priority, and then after that, the date is the priority. So if we want the date to be the priority, then we just drag that up above that. You can do a lot of powerful stuff with sorting. If you're a content creator, I recommend checking out my publish OS template. I've used the sorting function to create a system where you can automatically see which of your ideas for content will perform the best. All right, and lastly, let's have a look at grouping. So I'm going to duplicate everything again, and I'll just call this everything three. Now to access grouping, what you're going to do is click on these three dots here, and then here we can see group. So if we click on that, here we can group by name, date, or tags. So it's saying which of these columns, columns are the same thing as properties, which of these columns, AKA properties, do you want to group by? So let's say I want to group by the tags here of priority or low priority. If I click on that, you can see it splits it up into two. We have low priority and priority here. This again is super, super useful. And to reiterate, we are only seeing the groups here under this tab. So if we go back to the everything from the start, here we are not seeing anything with an actual filter to it. So again, this filter is empty. I'll just delete that. We don't have a filter. We don't have a sort and we don't have a group. This is only being affected on these actual tabs. So on this tab, we can see it being grouped by low priority and priority. We can also change the order of this. So if we go on group here, then we can drag this like this. And now we are seeing priority first and low priority underneath. You can also say you don't wanna see certain groups. So let's say you don't want to see stuff that's tagged as low priority. You can just click on the eyeball here. And now we are not seeing that here. It is a hidden group on this tab. Again, it is not hidden on these other tabs. Using filters, sorting, and groups has been the reason I've been able to build such a powerful all-in-one Notion system. Headquarters has over 800 users with a five-star rating and uses these three functions to create a dashboard that handles your entire work life, personal life, and business. Click on this video here to see Headquarters and this video here to see my content creator template, PublishOS.